I'm Ryan. We're going to go ahead and show off Reptile World today here in Manhattan, Kansas. Hopefully you guys enjoy the zoo here. I'm Ryan Forkel. We're here at Manhattan Reptile World. We have a small zoo located in Manhattan, Kansas. We're going to kind of go through today and show off some of those animals. Here's Speedy. He's one that's going to be kind of running around the zoo and stuff. He's been here a couple years now. He's a male sulcata tortoise. So he's about 18 to 19 years old. He's a, about 140, 150 pounds. And He's, he's kind of our mascot here. He's outside during the summertime, running around the zoo in the wintertime. And so he'll be, he'll be in there. We can go on in here if you want to see some of the other animals. So he's about 95% done. He's got two floors and a couple of things. When you walk in here, the, the first things that you'll see are some of the local venomous snakes. We want to do that as kind of an educational thing to show people. Like a lot of people think, okay, that's a copperhead when they see a water snake, but we want to kind of educate the public on the ones that are around here. Uh, so Cottonmouth, they're on the bottom. They actually only range into one county in Kansas, but they still classify them as a native species. Down here is a hypomelanistic western diamond bat. This is the timber rattlesnake, the Crotalus horridus. These are one of the larger ones that you'll find in Kansas that are usually out in the woods and different different areas like that that people hike. They're actually one of the calmer species of rattlesnakes that we have here. Uh, definitely individuals will vary, but for the most part they're just trying to get away. They don't come after you or anything. So this is our crocodile monitor. He's, he's still getting used to everything here. So he's a little bit skittish and We'll kind of see how he acts if he wants to come out or not. Uh, he's he's about two years old now, and usually he has a pretty decent temperament. He doesn't mind being held, but they have one of the worst bites of any monitor lizard, so he's something that you definitely want to be careful with. So he's about two years old and already with his tail about four and a half, five feet. So the tail is what makes up most of the body, or most of the length of crocodile monitors. They're actually the longest monitor lizard around, next to Komodo dragons. And their, their head structure is just so unique. They, they've got, kind of got a blocky head, similar to Komodo's. So if you compare to them to like a water monitor or something, the head structure is just so much different. So he's, he's enjoying life here now. He's got a real big cage and we're getting him established and getting him eating pretty well. He's already taming down pretty well. Uh, when we first got him and he was at his other location, he was a little skittish and stuff. Not necessarily mean or anything, but he's kind of a normal crocodile monitor. So to have a, even a semi-tame one of these is pretty cool to have here. He spends most of his time in the water and then basking up on his big hide or on his big ledge over there. But here we eat a lot of fish. We'll put uh, different kinds of fish in there to swim around for him to kind of interact with and chase down so that he can get kind of a sense of hunting. And then he'll eat a lot of tilapia fillets and rat pups and chicken and stuff like that. So he's doing pretty good and we're definitely excited to have him growing up here. And then over here we have the panther chameleons. Right now there's just females in there. Uh, the male, the male passed of old age, but the female in the middle there just laid some eggs not too long ago. Colin breeds those ones here, and we've been producing about 100 a year or so. And in here will be our uh, poison dart frog enclosure, but for now we have a marine toad in here, the cane toad. So these guys are pretty cool. They're one of the 
They're the, actually, I think they are the largest species of toad. So these guys are awesome. They're, uh, this one's actually from Suriname, so they're not the ones that are running around Florida and stuff. So they're pretty cool. And then over here around the corner, we have some other cool stuff. Uh, in here is a green tree python. It's one of the uh, adult females that we have that we're hoping to breed this year. And then to the right, matching the same color theme, we have green tree monitors. We have a pair of those that we're hoping to breed here in the next couple of years when they get bigger. They're still a little bit younger, so they've got some growing to do before they breed. These are one of the smaller monitor species. These guys are pretty tame. We haven't had any aggression issues with these. We've only had them about six or eight months now. Those are really cool. We have a uh, couple adult blue chum skinks that are cohabitating with an Aldabra tortoise. We're raising an Aldabra that uh, she'll have a big outdoor cage when she's bigger. She's about two years old now and already growing pretty good. And then up here we have a monocled cobra. He's one of our only non-native venomous right now. So he's pretty cool. We've had him for a while. Here's one of our red tegus. Yep, uh, in here we'll have a red, a black and white, and then a red hybrid with a black and white. So this is one of the younger ones. But he's already getting bright red colors. And he's, he's going into sheds, so he's a little bit more dull. He's pretty active. He likes moving around a lot. Then after about a month or so, when they kind of get that appetite. The black and white's hiding. He's going to poke his head out down here. Okay. He's pretty cool. He's also going into shed. This is the, the hybrid black and white red. So you can see on the top part that it's all dirty now, but it looks like a black and white on the top, and on the bottom, it looks like a red to you. That was a personal pet of mine that I've been raising up over the last couple of years. So this is our younger female green anaconda that we have on display. We have an adult male that's about 12 or 13 feet that's out on a breeder loan right now. So she doesn't, she doesn't really have a name yet, but she's about a year old now. She's grown pretty quickly for her age. Uh, she's one of the ones that I actually bought for a pet and we ended up raising here. We're eventually planning to breed her to the big male that we have. Uh, she's, she's really cool. She came from an individual in Arizona who had a litter of 17 or 18 babies and she's by far the biggest one that anybody has right now for her size or for her age. So I love the anacondas, like the speckling and the, the spots that go down the back, how they're so even and they're all pretty similar shaped. But the cool thing about green anacondas is none of, no individual looks alike. They're kind of like snowflakes where all the, all the patterns on the back will be different the belly pattern will be different. So she's she's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and put her back in her water area since it's getting to be nighttime for them. So their lights will be going off in a little while. She spends most of her time in the water. Usually she'll come on to land to bask with, after she has a big meal or something, but she's got heated water in here and that's where she's gonna spend most of her time. cage over to the left of it, we have our winter housing for an American alligator. So he's about three years old. He was actually a rescue from uh, Kansas City. Somebody had called me and said that if I didn't come pick him up that he was going to throw him in the river. So I came to get him so that we didn't have any careless animals running around like that. He definitely wouldn't have survived a winter in Kansas. Um, he's, he's a little bit grumpy. He didn't really grow up the best, so he's been doing pretty good here. So he's, he's 
usually has a pretty decent attitude. Yeah, he's about four and a half feet long, so he's still got a lot of growing to do. But these are definitely, the bad thing is a lot of people get these as cute little babies from a reptile expo or something and not, not have the full capabilities of being able to handle one when it's bigger. Because like I said before, he's only about two or three years old. So he has a lot of growing left to do. Female alligators reach eight to nine feet and males can even reach 12 to 14 feet. So it's definitely not something that everybody can handle or really wants running around their house and should have running around their house. But they're definitely rewarding pets for the right keepers and in displays like this because they do really well and they actually interact a lot better than different crocodilians. So he's acting a little bit hissy, but alligators are known for that. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's being aggressive. It just means he's kind of displaying a non, non-interest basically. So he's in here for the winter, but in the summertime, he has a big outdoor cage here. But he's got a bigger water area and land area. Unfortunately, we can't keep animals out year round here in Kansas because a couple days ago it was negative 10, I think. So they would not do well in that. So these are a couple of our alligator snapping turtles here. Uh, they're a little bit grumpy, as you can see. These are, they're kind of a slow growing turtle. Uh, these are about six years old each, estimated. Uh, but these are the largest freshwater turtle in the United States. They reach up to about 150 to 200 pounds. They just look prehistoric, their heads. They've got the little worm type of lure in there inside their mouth that they use as kind of bait for, they'll sit on the bottom uh, and wait for fish to come try to eat it and then they'll eat the fish. So it's pretty, pretty good adaptation that they have. They're a little bit different than the common snapping turtles, not just in size, but just that they, they can't move the same ways that commons can. So you can put your hand behind their head and they can't get to you. And they don't have the same strike range that commons do. Uh, these, these guys are really cool. And we'll be in the outside display in the zoo this summer.